Hi everyone, how are you doing? My name is Pisayo. I'm also known as D Pisayo. I'm a travel blogger. I'm on a growth journey and I'm currently a master's student here at Royal Rose University located in Canada. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I was able to get my admissions into Royal Rose University. And honestly, everything I'm going to be sharing with you is from a blog post. I released a blog post on the 29th, I believe, of January 2022. <laughs> January 2022. And I'm basically going to be sharing with you because I realized most people still said they wanted a video. So I'm going to be sharing with you some steps, like actually showing how to click on those links I shared on my blog post and giving you more details on some of the things I shared as well. So the first thing I mentioned on the blog post is for you to know what you want. By the way, I'm going to be leaving the link to this blog post in my description, in the description box of this video. So if you don't know what the description box is, feel free to ask a friend or anyone close to you to help you locate it. It's basically beneath the title of the video, the section beneath the title of the video. I'm going to be leaving the links to that blog post as well so that you can also find, you know, there are other things I've shared on Canada that you'll find useful there. Now, if by any chance any of the things I share resonates with you and it's of, it's of help, please like this video. <laughs> I realize I've been forgetting to tell people to like the video. Please like the video if it's of help to you. Okay, so I mentioned that the first thing you should, that would help in this, deciding what school you want before you even begin to apply is to know what you want. So for me, how I was able to decide, oh, this is the university I want to go to was the location of the school. It's currently located in the warmest region of Canada. And honestly, coming from Nigeria being a warm place, I did not want to come and be suffering of cold, okay? <laughs> so I wanted a, a, a warm region. And that of course comes at the price. Being that it's the warmest region in Canada, it's also the most expensive. All right, so course modules. I am currently studying tourism management. And, and there are some things I was looking to learn um, from the course. And I was like, does this particular school have it? If it does, then good. If it doesn't, then no. The next thing was where the requirements. I had a, <laughs> I had applied to universities. Hey, and I have received a number of yeses and a few no's from those applications. But I have applied, so I was not in the mood. I did not have the energy to be going to apply for a university that the requirements were was too much. I was not ready to write any new new exam, any GMAS, all those things. Not me. I said, if this university does not, if I don't have whatever this university is requiring, I ain't gonna apply. <laughs> so I need, I, I was, I was all part of my screening process in requesting for it, um, in choosing the school that I wanted. Um, I'm going to share a bit about, you know, the no's I got in terms of applications to school in AB. So if you're interested in that, maybe just check for timestamps. So I might mention that in the, um, and put the timestamp. I might put a timestamp rather in the description. So please check out for that as well. Um, I also was interested in a school that had, um, internship opportunities, not all schools, not all masters level provides opportunity, um, um, internship opportunities to their students. Now, this is important. Why? Internship or co-op? Because if you are given, if your school or your master's degree has an internship or co-op, it means that you will be allowed to work. And this means you'll be given a work permit. And if you don't have an internship attached to your course, then why should the Canadian embassy give you a work permit? So right now I have both a work permit and a student permit. So I work here in Canada as well. Even, even with the fact that I've not started my internship, I'm already working. Okay, so that is important. That's key. All the very key <laughs> for my Nigerians out there. <laughs> um, I wanted a master's degree and not a diploma. Some people come and you know just do diploma. Mostly, maybe because of the cost attached to it, or the fact that they did not have a good result at the beginning, or, or for their undergrad, so it is required that you might want to do a diploma first. Or, I mean. People just want to actually come and work here in Canada and live here in Canada. So sometimes they ask, they ask you to actually have a degree from this country if you for some certain jobs, right? So some people be like, oh, the easier option is diploma, which is very valid. It is very valid. All of these options I just mentioned are very valid. But for me, I had been out of school, out of undergraduate, like I'd finished my undergraduate degree um, in 2015. So it's, this year we're making seven years till I finished my undergraduate degree. So I was already looking forward to my master's. 
I've been praying to God. And I mentioned this in my previous videos too. I've been praying to God. I've been trusting God. So master's degree was what I wanted, not a diploma. Now I was also focused on the admission period. I when I realized I'll be coming to Canada, I which was around this time last year. <laughs> um I, I i tried to plan if i apply now when would the admission be out if it will be out in um january or march which eventually came out in march i applied january 28th or 29th and i received my admission in march 2nd or 3rd and i applied for my visa in april by the way i have made a video on how to apply for a um, canadian student visa so make sure you click on that link now i knew that i don't well i knew that it was going to take a long period of time to wait for my visa so i'm like okay let me just you know calculate if i apply now and get my admission in march and i apply for my visa in april maybe i'll worst case scenario i'll get it in august so my school had an august admission um a january admission and a may admission I was thinking of May before, but like now with this kind of plan that I have in mind, let's do August. <laughs> so I applied for August. So and that was part of my screening factors. Those this particular school have this kind of flexibility on when I can resume and when I cannot resume. So for you, other factors that you might want to look at in choosing a school, maybe the classroom size. Some schools are really big. Like some classrooms in some schools are really big and that might not encourage your learning, it might not facilitate your learning well. So you may want a, a school that does not that has a small classroom just like mine. In my class, the highest we've ever been is 35. And if we are growing more than like 40, they, they, they begin to divide us into sections that oh section one go here, section two go here. Okay. Uh, other things you might want to look out for the level of this level, professional level of your instructors. How many of them actually understand what they are teaching and what have they done in their industry in the past? And they always put the purpose of the instructors on your university bio. And the language, if you're a French speaking person, you might not want to come to British Columbia, which is where I'm at. You might want to go to um, Quebec or Montreal, something like that. All right, so I believe that's it. it. There are other factors you can consider for yourself, but those are the things that I looked at and I'm hoping that it will help you now getting into how to apply or get a school admission i will share a link here in the description but if you are on my blog post already this will be easy for you i basically just said number one click on this link to source for the designated dli i'm going to share a video on how to do that as well so you go source for so a designated dli basically means that this school is actually approved and accredited by canada for you know for them to teach <laughs> essentially so there are two ways to check the first way is to go through you know just go a little google search designated learning institution a website will come up which i'm sharing right now and you will just look for if you found a university that you want check the list is this university on this list cool but if you've not found the university that you want, then the previous link I shared will be great. This link essentially allows you to look for a school based on the course that you want. Um, and to just give you, it's just narrow down all the schools and you make a decision. Now your decision then being based on the things I have shared with you in the past. Is this school in the province that is warm or cold? The language, what's the school like? And all of those things I mentioned earlier. Um, Secondly, once you decided on the school, you screen through the requirements. You spend time in this requirement. I always went back to the requirement. Am I actually fulfilling what else is left? Okay, I've sent my transcript. By the way, shout out to Cover University. My transcript, <laughs> the process for sending my transcript was not too difficult. All I had to go to the cop to, all I had to do to get my transcript was to go to the website for our alumni on our alumni page and register and pay, and it was sent to my school. Now, part of the requirement for my school. Well, my transcript was sent directly to the school not from me to the school but directly from my school to the school so that's why i had to pay to get the official transcript and that took like two to three weeks right to get to the school because um korea can take a long time i don't know um after you've gone through the requirements give yourself two to one two weeks to one month to get all your documents together 
um, I, I spent the most of January getting my documents together. After I was able to get my documents together, I applied in um, January 2028 or 29, basically towards the ending of the month after I got my documents together. Um, and I reached out to the professor. I did my research, like I went to the website. Who are the professors that are in this course? Who is currently doing something in line with what I am passionate about? I saw Professor Eugene, which I have shouted out severally on my Instagram. Um, shout out to you once again. <laughs> and I reached out to him and I reached out to a few other um, students from the school as well, so that I can also start asking questions. Oh, what I, what exactly is required? I did have a meeting with a meeting or two with Eugene before I applied and after I applied uh, to ask questions on what exactly. And it was so, you know, what's the word now? It was so helpful. Like when I got to the school here, I could see that it's the lecturers here are actually in need to actually help you. They want to see you grow. They actually want to help, which is amazing. I'm like, yo, I'm at the right place. Thank you, Lord. Number five is to get your documents together. Now, I am going to share with you the documents that I submitted. Um, before I even go ahead with the documents, I listed here that I paid my application fees. So there are two fees I paid, application fee and um, transcripts evaluation fee. Some schools require that you get your evaluation from WES, um, which is, I do not know the full name of WES, I'm just going to put it on the screen. But this is the standard one that most schools and even the immigration uses to evaluate most people's transcripts. Now, the essence of this is if you did not study here in Canada for your first degree, they want to be sure that whatever certificate or transcript you're submitting is authentic. So it's evaluated by West. Well, my school had an internal evaluator. So I just all I had to do was pay for it and pay for my application, which cost me 252 Canadian dollars now i paid for that i submitted my detailed resume i submitted my transcripts i went to covenant university so i mentioned this because it was easy applying for my transcript all i had to do was go to the website of alumni page apply for it paid for it and within two weeks it got here in canada um i submitted my personal statement which was two pages long single line spacing <laughs> single line spacing um two reference letter of reference it could be two academic I believe everything differs depends on what your school is asking for from you my school required all of this and i'm just sharing with you what i submitted uh, and i submitted my ielts now this ielts came true for me because i mentioned i i i applied for ielts in 2019 i did my ielts i got my results in 2019 june so it only lasts for two years so we're going to expire in june 2021 oh I'm like, thank you, Lord, that I don't have to write another new exam. I can just use this old one, and I basically just use it, and I submitted. So, and that was it. That was all the documents I submitted, and by God's grace, I got my admission. <laughs> um, so make sure you follow all these instructions on the page that your web that is on the website of the school that you want, and. If you do, like for me, I went back over and over again to make sure I've dotted my I's and crossed my T's. And at this point, all you have to do is hand it over to God after you've done your best. Hand it over to God. Hand it over to God. Now, if it is for you, if it's, it is for you. I mentioned it on my blog post. Like if it is for you, it is for you. Let me quickly share with you what I shared on the blog post as well. That Let me backtrack. So please follow this journey. In 2019, I applied to go to school. In the UK, in 2020, I applied to go to school in the UK. Even in 2018, I applied to go to school in the UK. Now, all of these years, I got admission, but I did not go to these universities because they were too so expensive, and I was expecting a scholarship, and I didn't get a scholarship for all of the times I applied. <laughs> and I was always, oh no, extremely sad. Um, but then 2020 came, like December 2020, a school had a, a, a scholarship attached to it. So I said to myself, let me apply for this one. I applied for it. It was in the UK. Um, I was expecting for the result to come out. The result came out in January of 2021, which was last year. 
and it was it didn't go through so i was extremely devastated i was sad and i was like okay god i submit to your plan i submit to your plan you want me to go to canada it's okay i surrender i surrender anyways i surrender to your plan and purpose for my life and i realized that when you submit to god when you're in his will for his life for your life everything obeys everything obeys everything obeys because he has paved the way for you all you have to do is align and you see that everything is already working together for your good and that's what i realized immediately i applied for my admission in january i got my admission in march i applied for my visa in april i got my visa in august now all of this is honestly a testimony because <laughs> please go and watch the video on the visa by the way and i know a number of people that of course have submitted the same document but did not get the admission and that is even my story as well i mean i submitted my document for this application in the uk in 20 in 2020 waiting for it in 2021 only to say i didn't go through and i knew that i got i had all the documents like i did everything but that was not god's will for my life and all i had to do was align to god's will for my life so my urge for you now is submit to god make sure that whatever you're doing is according to his will for your life number one number two if it is for you it is for you you've done all your all that you can and you'll get it if it is for you whatever is for you will not miss you because it is for you <laughs> do you get it if you don't get it forget about it <laughs> anyway <laughs> that is all i have to share um i hope that helped in any way possible i also shared in the article that if you would like me to be of help to you in reviewing your essay i can do that but i can only do it for one student per month and that can only work for maybe two years i don't even know how long i can do this for right now i'm just dedicating myself to helping just one student per month um what else i also mentioned in the blog post that if you studied a course that's different from the an undergraduate course that is different from the master's level course you want to study um i share tips on how to write your article um or your essay that will be able to share your journey and communicate why you deserve to actually be chosen or admitted into this new course of study even with the fact that your undergraduate course of study is different from your master's level course of study so the article is definitely going to be helpful please feel free to click the link in the description the title of the article is how to apply to a can to a university in canada as an international student yeah if you enjoyed this video please like it share it with anyone that you think it will be helpful for and like share and subscribe <laughs> subscribe if you want more information or if you're interested in more content like this yeah and i would also be looking forward to leave, seeing your comments so please if you have any questions on how to whatever it is i don't know whatever it is based on this that i have shared if there's something i did not touch on and you want me to explain more or further i can either answer the question down in the comment section or if it requires for me to make a full video on it i will do that as well whatever be the case please leave your comment <laughs> and i'll see you in my next video till next time do not forget to stay awesome stay inspired peace